the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 46 and 47 today. Father, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Isaiah 46, verse 1, Bel bows down, Nebo stoops, their idols were on the beast and on the cattle. Your carriages were heavily loaded, a burden to the weary beast. An image of an idol cannot move by itself. It has to be moved. No wonder God says they can't help anyone. If they can't even move themselves, pretty useless. Just think about it. Two, they stoop, they bow down together. They could not deliver the burden, but have, but have themselves gone into captivity. The gods whose images are carried away captive along with their worshippers are helpless. They cannot, they cannot rescue their worshippers or even their own images. Verse 3, listen to me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, who have been upheld by me from birth, who have been carried from the womb. God says, Israel, I have supported you since before you were a nation. Now listen to what I have to say. Verse 4, even to your old age I, I am he, and even to gray hairs I will carry you. I have made and I will bear, even I will carry and will deliver you. God sticks with his people. They may leave him, that's their business, but he will never walk away from them. Verse 5, to whom will you liken me and make, my, make me equal and compare me that we should be alike? God cannot be compared to anyone or anything else. The moment we try to down the moment we try to compare God to anyone or anything else, we automatically downgrade God. Six. They lavish gold out of the bag and weigh silver in the balance. They hire a goldsmith, and he makes it a god. They prostrate themselves, yes, they worship. They bear it on the shoulder, they carry it and set it in its place, and it stands. From its place it shall not move. Though one cries out to it, yet it cannot answer, nor save him out of his trouble. Some idols were very expensive, and they were nothing but a big waste of money for those who paid for them. Just like throwing money out the window. In fact, you'd be better off throwing money out the window. Verse 8. Remember this, and show yourselves men. Recall the mind, O oh, you transgressors. God is saying, remember what I'm saying. You worship any God besides me, and you are throwing your life away. Verse 9, and not to mention your soul. 9, remember the former things of old. For I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me. It's good to remember the things which... God has done in the past and learn from those things. Verse 9. Rem <clears throat> yeah, verse 9. Remember the former things of old. For I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. God keeps saying this. He has to because people keep forgetting that it's true. And then he goes on in verse 10. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things that are not yet done saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. God does everything he intends to do. His plans will never fail. Since the beginning, God has known what the end will be. Verse 11, Calling a bird of prey from the east, the man who executes my counsel from a far country. Indeed, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it. I will also do it. The man from the east will be Cyrus, king of Persia, who came along, like I said last time, about 200 years after this was written. He was a foreigner, but that doesn't matter. God uses whoever he wants to use. 12. Listen to me, you stubborn-hearted, who are far from righteousness. Israel frequently thought that they had a better way to do things than God. 
like here, God calls them stubborn because they refuse to believe that God would use a foreigner as his instrument to bless them. Well, guess what happened? 200 years later, that's exactly what happened. 13. I bring my righteousness near. It shall not be far off. My salvation shall not linger. And I will place salvation in Zion for Israel my glory. God tells his people that he will save them pretty soon. And he's going to do it for his glory. Chapter 47. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground without a throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans. For you shall no more be called tender and delicate. The daughter of Babylon here refers to the city of Babylon, which was very famous for its beauty. And God warns, he says, you may be beautiful, but your enemies are going to destroy you, and you're never going to be beautiful again. Verse 2, take the millstones and grind mill. Remove your veil, take off the skirt, uncover the thigh, pass through the rivers, your nakedness shall be uncovered. Yes, your shame will be seen. I will take vengeance and I will not and I will not arbitrate with a man. <clears throat> In other words, Babylon is going to suffer the shame that they brought on all those nations that they had defeated previously. Verse four As for our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts is his name, the Holy One of Israel. God is the Redeemer. In other words, he is the one who rescues his people from things which are too difficult for them to save themselves from. God is our Redeemer. 5. Sit in silence and go into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for you shall no longer be called the Lady of Kingdoms. Sit in silence means Babylon will not be the big superpower anymore. They will not be bossing anyone around anymore. 6. I was angry with my people. I have profaned my inheritance and given them into your hand. You showed them no mercy. On the elderly, you laid your yoke very heavily. Verse 7. And you said, I shall be a lady forever, so that you did not take these things to heart, nor remember the latter end of them. God used Babylon to punish his sinful people, but Babylon went too far. They were very cruel. And as a result, God's not going to give them, God's going to, I should say, God is going to give them some of their own medicine. They will have people who will be cruel to them. Verse 8. Therefore hear this now, you who are given to pleasures, who dwell securely, who say in your heart, I am, and there is no one else besides me. I shall not sit as a widow, nor shall I know the loss of children. Babylon was wealthy. You know, they had it made. They were the big power. And they didn't think that, they would ever, that that would ever change. But it would always be wonderful for them. Verse 9. But these two things shall come to you in a moment, in one day. The loss of children and widowhood. They shall come upon you in their fullness because of the multitude of your sorceries. For the great abundance of your enchantments. Babylon will also suffer for practicing the occult, which, by the way, is an abomination to the Lord God. We see it on television, don't we? We see it in movies, even kids' shows, or shows aimed at teens and preteens. This fascination with the occult that has just exploded in the last couple of decades. You know, it's just as wrong today as it was wrong back in those days. And it's just as much as sin. You can call it entertainment if you want. It's not entertainment to God. It's a sin. It's an abomination to Him. And if we think that we are immune from the punishment of God, well, we should just remember Babylon, because that's what they thought too. They were the world's superpower too, and they went down the drain. Verse 10. For you have trusted in your wickedness. You have said, no one sees me. Your wisdom and your knowledge have warped you. And you have said in your heart, I am, and there is no one else beside me. You know, they were not as smart as they thought. They thought they could control their own, control their own destiny. They thought they could sin and not be accountable to God. They were wrong. 
11. Therefore evil shall come upon you. You shall not know from where it arises, and trouble shall fall upon you, and you will not be able to put it off. And desolation shall come upon you suddenly, which you shall not know. God says you're going to be very surprised when all of a sudden you are attacked and you are destroyed. And boy, were they ever surprised. You read about that in the book of Daniel. It happened. They were in the middle of a big party. The king was in the middle of a big party. He was mocking God and all of a sudden, wham, the Medes and the Persians attacked them and conquered them. 12. Stand now with your enchantments and the multitude of your sorceries in which you have labored from your youth. Perhaps you will be able to profit. Perhaps you will prevail. God says, you're not going to turn to me in your time of trouble. You're going to keep doing what you've always done, thinking that you will prevail somehow. 13. You are wearied in the multitude of your counsels. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, and the monthly prognosticators stand up and save you from these things that shall come upon you. The Babylonians listened to the advice from the wrong people. And that kind of thinking got them into trouble. And it kept them in trouble too. 14. Behold, they shall be as stubble. The fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. It shall not be a coal to be warmed by, nor a fire to sit before. God says they will burn and they will not be able to rescue themselves from the flames. Verse 15. Thus shall they be to you with whom you have labored. Your merchants from your youth, they shall wander each one to his quarter. No one shall save you. In their time of need, the Babylonians will look to the astrologers for help. But that's like looking, that's like looking for water down a dry hill dry well. It's just not going to be there. They're dropping their bucket down a dry well. And that's, that's the case with anybody who looks for help from anyone except for God. Eventually they will realize that they are looking for water in a dry well. Next time, chapter 48. Until then, Michael Merritt for Scripture Verse by Verse. So long, everyone.